Texas Podcast Massacre contains spoilers and adult language. For more horror, visit us at our website at texaspodcastmassacre.com. Welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, coming to you from Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Mitch, and with me as always is my co-host, Nate. Will you marry me? Uh, I mean, I'll settle. I, I guess I'll settle. You're just set- want you to know, I want you to know that, though. I'm, I am settling. Dude, that went so much better <laughs> than I thought it was going to go. If, wow. Right? All right. right. Are uh, we done? I don't know. What? Yeah. Uh, that's, this, right? Yeah, this is a, probably the best this has started out in quite some time. Uh, welcome to a special episode of Texas Podcast Massacre. Uh, normally, we do a movie review. We'd have Lisa here uh, being tormented by a horror movie she absolutely doesn't want to watch. Uh, but today we actually have a special, uh, we have a couple special guests. We're going to be talking about the brand new movie, It Cuts Deep, uh, that comes out November 13th. Uh, so that's this Friday. I keep forgetting it's actually Friday the 13th. Um, but we are here with both the director, Nick Santos. And How's it going? Yeah, <laughs> I never really get the, the pause there. And uh, also with Charles Gould, who is the lead of the movie. And he's frozen. All right. I'm just no, kidding. I know. <laughs> Kara, are you, what are you, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I was trying to see if I could be more awkward than Nick was. It's it's the old, it's the ultimate goal. One of us is gonna is gonna leave here with most awkward by the end of the night. Uh, okay. We'll try to give you a run for your money for sure. No, uh, welcome okay. to the show. Uh, so Nate and I had a chance to screen it cuts deep earlier um in fact i I literally just finished it earlier today uh so i it's 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 great so i'm really excited to talk to y'all about it we've got a lot of questions um i guess nate i don't know if you want to kick off or well no yeah so i guess uh, my my first question is so so how did the movie come about how did this uh, kind of whole concept uh come together um, so yeah, at the time I was preparing to propose to my wife and I felt this deep terror and fear. Um, and it seemed like the perfect jumping off point for a horror movie. All right. Yeah. So I proposed to my wife, uh, I during a just, game of, we just watched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you saw it. We it happened live it. here. Yeah. Hey, you know, know, we're in Texas. You know, if you're in West <laughs> Texas, you can pull it off twice. You know, I don't, you know okay. Texas, uh, this one is probably good. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I proposed to my wife uh, I during a Scrabble game. So I, I hid the letters marry me, which is seven, the correct number. My family's <laughs> real sticklers for Scrabble. Uh, and I proposed saying marry me. So how did you do it? So you were you were gripped with fear about the prospect, at least briefly. How did you actually end up proposing? Um, it was her birthday, and we went to go see uh, how does it get made live. Um, and then I had oh, prepped, nice. kind of I had prepped the apartment, and I had hid the ring in like making it seem like I just got her a gift, and making it seem like it was like a no big deal, just a birthday gift. And then when she dug into the gift and pulled out a ring. Nice. That's really cool. Very cool. And then, and what was over. what was the movie? Um, I think How did this get I'm blanking on which Superman it was. It was like Superman Four, I think. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> the best one. Wait, is that yeah, the one where he spin he spins the Earth the other way to fit, or is that no? It's, no, I think it's the computer one. Oh, okay. I. <laughs> Jesus We're gonna sorry. What? Shit, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and. <laughs> Charles, so you're you're the only one I think of the three not not Hitch. So yes. not, yeah, not to not to be like your your buddy in the movie and put you on the spot. Uh, we certainly yeah. can. If you want to bring Kara in, we can ask her about it. Um, Kara, so, no, she's, <laughs> Kara, get in here. Yeah. Um, she's not no, here. So she's I'm curious. So Charles, I know you've been uh, you know you're a stand up comedian. I saw a little bit of your set from when you were on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Um, 
so I'm curious, what's the, I think this is your first lead in a movie. Is that right? Or that is right. Yeah. So, so horror movie taught me that, uh, what made you want to go horror movie versus doing a comedy or, or, or something else? Was it something about this project or. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that this movie is, is like really, really funny. And when I read the script, I was like, Oh, I'm comfortable in how funny this, this movie is. And for like the first 60%, it's just like, I was like, oh, I just kind of get to be myself and it's kind of like a comedy. And like even my sense of humor is a little awkward and my sense of humor is like a little cringy. So even as like the horror e parts start to kind of like ramp up and the kind of like thrillery parts where as an audience member, like you're kind of like on the edge of your seat. It's not really that far away from watching me do stand up. I feel like <laughs> I feel like a lot of watching me do stand up, especially the set on Kimmel is like, I really hope this turns into a joke at some point. And I think people <laughs> sit on the edge of their seat and they're like, okay, this is a stand up comedian. So we're hoping a punchline is coming soon and they feel very uncomfortable. And then the punchline comes and they're like, oh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For much of the first part of this movie, I just remember leaning in going, oh, what is you doing, my man? <laughs> what, yeah. what, what is you doing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, so, I, they, I, you know, we probably should have done this right at the start. Uh, you know, we usually have our unsuspecting victims. It's usually someone we don't call a horror fan uh, who's on a guest uh, do this. But, Nate, let's have you be the unsuspecting victim. What is this movie oh, about for our listeners who who don't quite know what we're, you know, it cuts deep yet? What, what is that so, about? All right, so, I'll give a synopsis of the film. So, guy dating girl way out of his league uh, takes Why does her- everybody say that? <laughs> I'm basing it on the uh, the dialogue and that. <laughs> okay, everybody, this is two things. <laughs> two things that everybody has said about this movie so far: guy dating girl who's way out of his league, doesn't realize what he has. Then way way better looking guy comes into movie who's better than other who's better than original guy in every way and uh, destroys guy. I, so I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with that. I think uh, okay. I like, I like, I like your sense of humor much better than other guy. Yeah. Nate, uh, Nate really that, falls for a guy that sense of humor. Clearly that cemetery, uh, joke, but... that cemetery <laughs> joke was a deal breaker. For me. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. Wait, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no so you're good. Okay. 99% of that was about what I was going to say, except for the okay. joke part. And then, uh, yeah. And then, then he realizes, Hey, you know, Maybe I I gotta rethink this, and then uh, shit gets wild. So I don't obviously don't want to ruin it because I want everyone to uh, to go check it out on the thirteenth. But needless to say, shit starts hitting the fan, and it definitely gets crazy. Yep. Yeah, that's a good summary. Yeah, Nate, you nailed it. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> well done. I was proud of you. I just, I, I want to see I want to see the backstory about how like what did. What did your character do to get her in the first place? Like, I, I was very interested. Just like, <laughs> what like, the origin story. I was story. hoping for, like, some sort of flashback. Like, how did this meet cute happen between this couple? When we see them, things are, like, a little bit strained, obviously, right? I, I, do you have, Nicholas, do you have, like, a backstory in your in your mind? I don't, but I can make it up right now. Uh, I think they met through friends in the city. I think she's attracted to assholes a little bit. <laughs> I think Sam was kind of an asshole. Uh, and she, for some reason, does find his sense of humor funny. And Charles, where did you take her on her first date? Uh, on our first date, we... <laughs> Damn. Um, I'm trying to think of something that like an asshole would do. Um, but I can't... I'm trying to think of like every first date that I ever had. And it was always at one of my, to one of my comedy shows. So I don't know. Does that make me an asshole? But uh, yeah. Oh no, that's okay. Their first date was at, to one of Sam's improv shows. Oh, there, there you go. Nice. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, meet me at this place at 1130 at night. Wait, what? And then uh, <laughs> Nate's, Nate's classic that. move is the waffle house. So, you know, I think that's probably still a step up. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Um, so, so I'm curious. So I think Nick, uh, Nicholas, you're, you've been doing short films mostly, I think at least directing wise. So is this your first full, your feature length film? 
Um, yeah, for the past like 10 years, I've been making a lot of music videos and shorts. Um, this is my first feature as director and writer, and, but I have produced uh, a feature before this. Gotcha. Okay. So. Very cool. And so what's, uh, I guess, what's that transition like going from doing music videos, which we definitely need to cycle back around, <laughs> uh, but doing music videos, shorts, and, and doing more of the production to the, actually directing the full and writing the full for length? Um, it feels like kind of all the projects actually eventually kind of just like built up um, in terms of like my growing style and like it all kind of built up to this. Um, so it was kind of a natural transition, um, kind of transition I was ready to make and kind of was sick of making shorts that no one watches. Uh, yeah, I think the problem with shorts, it's always hard to find them, right? Like, because I, I feel like Nate and I, we, we just got done with a... Uh, couple film festivals, I guess they all do in digital, but they had some really good shorts programs. But outside of that, I have no idea where to find shorts if you want to watch them anywhere, right? It's also, they can be so hit and miss from someone that has made a bad short, like they can be so hit and miss. So it's always also kind of just like, yeah, a little yeah. bit of a gamble when you click. What bad short like, did you make? I don't know. People have told me they've been bad. What short? I watched all your <laughs> shorts. Um, or is this a short that you didn't send me? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, just I'm actually blanking on which one. I don't know. I know that got really real there for a second. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Charles with a huge lead in the most awkward runnings. That's I, that may be insurmountable. I, I, I don't know where we're gonna go from there. Yeah, you gotta pace um, yourself. Man. Wait, 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 I was the awkward one there. <laughs> <laughs> again yeah. we're at the what did you do <laughs> Mitch, no. look, he's got a, Nick, nicholas has got a short memory on this kind of stuff yeah you just keep pushing forward that's fine. so the uh I, I wanted to ask so like filming the so where was the i guess where was the film uh where, where did you film at i guess um so we went and shot in my hometown in massachusetts um in cape cod yeah oh okay and then I guess, cause like, yeah, it had kind of obviously like a, oh yeah, you're out, you're out there, right? Like you're setting it exactly kind of in the, in the exact scene where someone would go back home. Right. And so I guess you went back home, which is, which is cool. Um, how, so how was it filming, like the, going, you know, going back to your hometown, how was it filming there as opposed to, you know, filming where, where or I, maybe you filmed your shorts in the same place, but. I assume, I assume not, but like, how was it going back there and filming and, and seeing the stuff that you grew up with? Um, it was really nice, actually, even though, because uh, the film felt very personal. Um, obviously, I haven't murdered my wife that you know of, um, <laughs> but uh, it was nice to go back and like kind of shoot it in areas that I grew up with. Um, and I really wanted that kind of like gloomy New England, Stephen King winter look. Um, and also the, the community was, was very supportive in a smaller town. Um, everyone's like, oh my God, you're shooting a movie, like a cures stuff for free, which is nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, yeah. Charles, how was your experience shooting in Cape Cod, Massachusetts? Cold. <laughs> yeah. It looked cold. <laughs> it was very, very cold. And I came from LA and I didn't have a winter jacket. And so I had to order one to where I was staying and then it didn't come. And so I had no jacket and it was like 10 degrees and it was freezing cold. And oh, and then we did actually see it, see a ghost. I did see a ghost. I <laughs> just going to leave that there. huh? <laughs> Tell us a ghost story. Where did you see a ghost at? No, I think I'll just leave it there. Okay, cool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, was it was it Casey Affleck? Uh, you're in you're in Massachusetts. Was it Casey Affleck in a sheet? Or what, what kind of ghost <laughs> we talking about here? I kind of it was not Casey Affleck in a sheet. It was um, like an older. So I was walking from set one day, and I uh, we walked. I was walking by this house, and there was a woman standing in her front window at the house, but I couldn't really see her because she was kind of like silhouetted in shadow um but she was very obviously watching me and john anderson who plays nolan walk down the street and so i waved to her because 
I didn't want the neighbors to hate us. We're like shooting this movie in their neighborhood and we're like screaming at the top of our lungs at like 2.30 in the morning. And, you know, we have a bunch of cars parked out on the street. So I like waved to her trying to be friendly and she did not wave back. And not only did she not even wave back, she just like stood there staring like straight at me. Like didn't even move a muscle. And um, John Anderson, who was with me, was like, wow, she does not like us and she does not like us shooting this movie in her neighborhood. And then I told Nick about the house because Nick grew up around there. And he was like, oh, nobody lives in that house. And nobody like has lived in that house for a couple months now. Wow. Okay. That's a true story. I was kind of yeah. No. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the adaption of this film now. You, know, you get to go, <laughs> yeah, back, go just... back to your hometown to film it again. Wow. Yeah, this Dang. could be part. Of, this could be part of the sequel. You know, <laughs> to be all tied in. Uh, just expand the universe. Um, it cuts deep too. The neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. Um, so I, I'm assuming this was filmed toward the end of last year, beginning of this year. Is is that right? Or when was this filmed? Um, so we shot in February of 2019. Was, oh, so it's, it's a couple of years. It was a while ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Very cool. Um, a, a simpler time. Simpler time, yeah. <laughs> COVID, uh, we had a different release kind of trajectory in March, and COVID kind of, you know, changed that up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I so I guess so. Okay, so this this is my best chance. We have a uh, running, um, a running kind of philosophical battle on our podcast uh, every time that we watch a movie. Mitch is from Louisiana. Uh, he's from Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> no, if, no one knows. No one knows or cares no, who that no, is. No, no, this, this <laughs> Louisiana. Thank you for the shout. I, I'm, I I'm from up north near Chicago. Chicago. And, you know Shreveport? Oh, you know. Yeah, of course. Ah, of course. Yeah, all right. There we go. I feel like there's like three places in Indi- in Louisiana that I know: Shreveport, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mitch lived in two thirds of those. Yeah, so that's you're, right. You're, yeah, you're right there. <laughs> um, you lived in Baton Rouge. But, yeah, I was born in Baton Rouge. I lived there for oh. a while. Then I moved to Shreveport and was there until I moved to Texas. So. Call him Baton Rouge. Oh my God! There's Garth Brooks. Are we still? Are we still? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I no, don't be it. sorry. Hey, do, look, okay. it, that's the that's the Baton Rouge uh, national anthem, I think. But so, or, or the Eye of the Tiger, one of the two. It's so, <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> is that song just on constantly in Baton Rouge? It was when I was growing up. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I don't know. I haven't been there in several years, so it probably is. I don't no, know. That's never gone. Some people may have distanced themselves after the Chris Gaines fiasco. We're, we're, we're you know, we haven't <laughs> haven't checked in on that, but uh, yeah, it's oh, really good. The Chris Garth Gaines, Brooks here, <laughs> but Chris Gaines didn't sing that song. Uh, you know, that just, was Garth Brooks. They're different people. No, that's uh, you know, you're right. You're right. I just. <laughs> I feel like we're starting a whole nother podcast. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> there should be a podcast about Chris Gaines. Uh, <laughs> a, whole, would, a whole Chris Gaines podcast. Just a dedicated. whole Chris Gaines podcast. You can do a lot of episodes, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, what's, what's, like, <laughs> okay, sorry, to, circle anyway. back, to circle back to what I was saying. Wait, I, Nate, Nate, I have a question <laughs> yeah. for you. Sure. On a scale of one to ten, how high are you right now? <laughs> Zero. <You're> just, <laughs> Nate just has one of those faces. Uh, I, do, I, I just have one of the faces. He has one of those faces. I've I been really, asked my entire life, are are you high and yeah. where's your skateboard? <laughs> my entire life, those are the two questions I've gotten almost exclusively. Uh, and, I, and I don't skate and I do not smoke. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm disappointing everyone left and right uh, who's asking me <laughs> random questions on the street. So. Okay. Well, actually, now I like you more because you follow the rules. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what, <laughs> what I was saying, uh, so Mitch lived down South. They did not have basements there. Right. And where I grew up, I actually, my, my room was in my basement. And so we have the, the philosophical battle of, of horror films, which one's creepier, the attic or the basement. So we always ask people when we have them on for an interview, which do you think is creepier? Is an attic creepier or basement creepier? Basement. Horror film? Oh, 100% basement. basement. And you're a northerner. Usually it goes along nor- north south <laughs> lines. Northerners have basements and aren't as afraid of them. No, Nicholas knows uh, what's up, man. He, he, okay, <laughs> so all right. Can, well, can we get can we get your rationale on that? What why is why are um, basements scarier? 
I don't know. I feel like every once in a while I have like a nightmare about my basement. And I don't know why. I specifically have a nightmare about my dad had this ventriloquist dummy when I was a kid. And I was terrified of it. Um, I came to learn later that I was terrified of it because when I was a baby, my brothers would go outside my window and put it in like the window and have it talk to me. (laughs) This is a story my mom recently told me. So then clearly that's why I was terrified of it. And I still weirdly have every like once a year, I'll have a random nightmare about like going down to my basement and there's like killer ventriloquist. Hold on. Can you, can you, can you pin this on basements at this point? I feel like this <laughs> basements at the wrong place in the wrong time in this jury. Guilt mean, by association on. doesn't matter, Nate. It's <laughs> the calls there. Well, uh, your, your basement is kind of creepy. It's a creepy basement. Yeah. Yeah. He, I've been in Nick's basement. It, it's, it's a little creepy. Have you, seen the, creepy. have you seen the, the dummy? Is the dummy still there? Was the dummy still there? I can't find it. Oh, I tried that's to not find good. It. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. You can't find it, but it's there. Don't worry. I was going to make a joke. I was going to make a joke Instagram where I set it on fire, but I couldn't find it to do it. And now I'm it's watching you. It's, it's outside your window tonight. Yeah. Wow. So Charles, sounds like your sounds like your uh, basement's creepier. For you I also. think basements are creepier, but like as a Jewish person who was raised on Anne Frank, I should probably say addicts. <laughs> That's, you know what? I'll dealer, accept it. I'll accept it. I'll accept it. I'll accept it. If you're the first time, I'm not going to argue against uh, an, someone picking Attic. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but basements are way, 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 way creepier, I have to say. All right. Well, I, I lose again here, Mitch. Nate, wow, I'm enjoying you getting dunked on in all these interviews. It's just, I know. It's so man, great. Every time. I, <laughs> Uh, oh, it brings me so uh, unending joy. So, um, <laughs> uh, I, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm curious. So, I, so this movie is fantastic. And, and for anyone listening or watching the video on YouTube right now, check it out. I do believe it's on, um, I think it's going to be in theaters in some places. Um, and it's also gonna be on VOD and digital. Uh, so yeah. I believe you should it'll be, be on, uh, it'll be in like, a few movie theaters um, in Ohio and Virginia. Okay. I'm not sure where else. Yet. They haven't given me the final ones yet. And then it'll be anywhere you uh, rent movies. Basically. You know, Ohio, they don't even think COVID's real. <laughs> 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 it was so funny. We were talking about, they were talking about the movie coming out in November. Like this was, we found this out like a month ago, maybe. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way this movie is going to come out in theaters. And then they were like, yeah, it is in Ohio. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you go into the opening screening in Ohio then, or are you just going to? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've been to Ohio, not missing, not missing much. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, but this, <laughs> I feel bad because the guys who are screening it are really nice yeah. and they really, really like the movie. Yeah. If it was, uh, if it wasn't COVID, I would go. In Columbus, I've heard good things. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I what I really like about this movie, I I, I mean, I think uh, Quinn does an incredible job in this movie. She it's just fantastic. I I I, I, I you're all great. I love um John uh, when he shows up in the and uh, again we don't want to give too much away right now because this isn't really a full review episode. But uh, when he shows up in the Santa Claus outfit, uh. I literally had to like pause the the video for a second just to like what what is happening right now. <laughs> I, I texted Nate like I am like thirty ish minutes in this yeah, movie. He's like what is going on? In, oh, it's, it starts happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean the Santa Claus outfit, nice touch. Uh, kind of just I don't know. I don't even know if I have a real question around this. It's just it definitely was made me pause. It was like what the hell? Yeah, it's more of a more of a thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> well, I, I guess my my question to follow up on that is you know so what was it like giving and, and getting, I guess the direction, right? So the dialogue and obviously the Santa outfit and a bunch of things kind of all fit into a kind of a theme of, you know, there's kind of this awkward kind of humor running through the movie. And there's kind of all these moments that pop in here and there. It, there's not like lulls or things where, you know, even when things are serious, there's, there's still comedy happening. Right. Um, so what was it like, I guess, giving that, like when you were directing this, like, what were you telling them, to do like, yeah. Cause you, you wrote it also and you were also directing it. Right. So 
how are you giving direction to do some of these things that were, you know, awkward or these kind of just ridiculous scenes? How, how did that go? Um, I, I think like no matter how crazy or bizarre they're acting, um, it was always kind of giving direction of like, this is a real thing, play it seriously, even though you're acting like a total psychopath. Uh, and even when it came down to like, a uh, little spoiler, but like, even when it came down to like, when I talked about murder with Charles, I was like, you never, you never killed anyone or you're not gonna kill anyone. You're always like, you, you just broke up with that person. You're just gonna like kind of break it off with your girlfriend and try to let her down nicely. And we always try to keep it like very grounded, even though they're saying crazy ass shit. Yeah. Yes. That was definitely like a big, a really good piece of direction from Nick for me was like, he was like, remember, this is all leading to a breakup and that's it. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk about this without giving spoilers, but um, that was, that was, that was the key that kept it grounded and kept it kind of funny is that to us, it was a romantic comedy the whole time. And yeah. once it actually became a horror movie, but Nick was like, but still, this is a romantic comedy, even though we're shooting horror shit. Yeah. And, and Charles, you do, you do, a, I, I don't know how to say this without it sounding asshole I, I apologize, but you, you do such a good job of like turning, like turning on like the, the creep factor, like at one point, like, cause in the first part of it, you know, your, your character is very kind of like, you know, you like, okay. It. Right. I know. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay. It, it, you know, it kind of a pushover kind of thing. Right. And then there's that one where you're talk you're talking to him through the door and it, you just almost see like the, 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 the switch flick on, right? Like something changed. You're like, Oh shit. Was not expecting, uh, was not expecting this kind of intensity coming. So I, I, I enjoyed it. It was really awesome, but yeah, definitely that part threw me, uh, quite a bit. I especially, I especially love when you yell at him. Why, like, why do you think I haven't responded to any of your text messages? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a turning point moment that I actually kind of noticed in the script where I was like, um, okay, this is where it's things start to go off the edge because damn, I want to, I have such a good answer to this question, but it gives spoilers. So I can't really give it, but that moment is a turning point moment for what was a turning point moment for me as an actor, because I, in the script, I saw that and it's like kind of, like, is this in Sam's head or is this not in Sam's head? And then I was starting to be like, okay, like this is when things really start to spiral from here out. Um, Cause it's just so, it's like what you said. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's weird, but I would say it, in a good way that, that was, that was when I, when Mitch sent me that text, I was like, Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Now, yes. Yeah, I, I know exactly where I, you are. I was like, like just, perfect. what is going on? <laughs> yeah, we definitely were in a good way for sure. Yeah, it only gets weirder from there. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then it just gets weirder. I did. I did also appreciate uh, you trying to cut the wood with the axe and that whole uh, disappointment there. Just as a nice, just just a nice yeah. scene. You know? <laughs> um, I don't know if if I mean I don't know if that was scripted or if they, I I truly believe that that probably just happened. You're like, yeah, we're just gonna keep that shit in the film. That was pretty. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you want to know, or will that ruin it for you? <sighs> I want to know. No, tell. Yeah, Please. tell. Come on. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up on uh, I grew up on like Three Stooges, and that was I was like, why don't we just throw? I was thought it was like it would be funny if Charles just tries to cut wood and fails miserably. Also, it felt like. Um, because Nick like grew up in Cape Cod, you actually had to cut wood for your heater, right? Um, my dad did make me cut wood and it was terrible. And I, re I don't know if you remember this, Nick, but I was like, did you have to do this when you were a kid? And you were like, yes, yes, I did. But this <laughs> was the was most like, traumatic okay. part of the movie for Nicholas. <laughs> <Which is why, laughs> <why, why, laughs> nothing else bothered him in this film, but just watching you trying to cut the wood. Like, uh. yes, it was. And I think it really came from a really real place for Nick. It's just like <laughs> this idea of like, this sucks. I hate doing this and I don't want, and I'm not good at it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a, it was kind of like a reverse Amityville horror in a way where, you know, he's, he's, he, the, in Amityville horror spiraling down using the wood to cut it menacingly 
this is could not be the more opposite. Yeah, right. scene. If you want to <laughs> juxtapose the two together, <laughs> pretty great. That, 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 actually, these two movies would make a good double feature. Actually, uh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that would totally work. Yeah. So I'm curious. So for for our show, we have uh, you know, I kind of mentioned we have what we call an unsuspecting victim. So we usually bring on uh, a guest who usually hates horror movies. Um, and we make them watch them. Sometimes they're classics. Sometimes they're just garbage films. And we we usually you know kind of catch their reaction. Sometimes they're Ice Cream Man with Clint Howard. Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how what we think about the friend. Um, I'm curious. Do you yourself identify as someone who doesn't like horror movies, or or do you or do you have friends or loved ones that are like those unsuspected victims, and you like to watch them watch horror films? I actually don't like watching horror movies. Really? Okay. Yes. I would be perfect for your podcast. Yeah, um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love it. I don't like it. Um, I I think I, because like that shit is real and it's really happening and it freaks me out. You know, vampires are real and zombies are real. You know, th- these things are all metaphors, obviously, sure. but they're metaphors for something. And then that that shit just really, really, really freaks me out because I, it just really scares me. I'm very easily scared. Now so I'm, I don't love watching horror movies, but I'm changing. I'm trying to watch scarier stuff because it's such a fun experience to watch like a really scary movie with 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 another person. It's just like such a good time. So I'm trying to be a little less scared. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, and, and that's largely why we started this. We uh, we've always kind of forced our friends to watch real, real terror. Usually it's been real terrible movies, not necessarily horror movies. Um, but, uh, none of our friends like horror movies outside of us. So yeah, same kind of, same kind of thing. Um, yeah. I don't think our friends appreciate the metaphor. At least you kind of do with some of them. I don't know if there's a metaphor to, to the leprechaun series, which is like Nate's favorite. Um, who now don't owns- be greedy. Don't be greedy. <laughs> don't, don't be greedy. Like the yeah. first one, what is thought, leprechaun in space? The Irish. Like I thought it was, we're not supposed to trust. Hey, that's that's well, we're screwed. No, we're that, screwed, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're screwed. Then, yeah, yeah, I don't trust myself. It's fine. <laughs> uh, and Nicholas, how about you? Are, are you a horror movie fan or? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've been a horror movie fan since I was a little kid. Uh, I actually can pinpoint the time too. It's like a well, there's two moments. My dad took me to see Event Horizon when I was like in second oh, grade. Nice, nice. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's, that's a scary one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I like I I just made him chop wood. I got to give him something. All right, let's, let's, let's see how that horizon real quick. <laughs> um, and then the second time, uh, my oldest my oldest brother would like fast. We would like fast forward through all the movies you get at Blockbuster and just show me the gory scenes because you're like, look at these awesome ass scenes. And then we would just watch the gory scenes over and over again. Um, and I think that's where it kind of all originally stemmed from whoa was this the well, same what? oh go ahead. go ahead i was just gonna say which movies um i'm very specifically interview of a vampire uh the battle scene with braveheart was like watching those over, and over. <laughs> <laughs> okay um uh, there's another one i'm blanking on that really oh. anyways yeah that was the same older brother that was uh using the dummy Outside your window as well as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, we laugh. Yeah, my older brother made me watch Nightmare on Elm Street when he would babysit me as a as a kid, and then would tell me Freddie was coming to get me. Uh, whenever I quote unquote acted up, I was like six. I don't know what that means, but, <laughs> <laughs> but sure. Um, so That's a classic uh, older brother move. Yeah. So, do y'all have a favorite uh, or a least favorite horror movie? Um, you may be, uh, you know, you may have more least favorite horror movies. I'm guessing if you don't enjoy enjoy them. Uh. But I, I, I actually do have a favorite. Okay, okay. I think my, or I have a movie that scared me the most. The most I've ever been scared by a movie is Sixth Sense. Um, That's a good one. Yeah, that one, that movie scared me and still scares me a little bit to this day. Because um, like when I was a kid, like a like when I was really young, I thought I could see ghosts. Like I was like a little bit of a weird kid, and I'd be like, I would think that I could see ghosts, or I, I like would feel energy and stuff like that. And then when that movie came out, and I watched it, I was like, holy shit, this is my biggest fear that I've had my whole entire life. 
on the screen. Thank you, M. Night Shyamalan. And uh, it scared me. And that's, so that's Sixth Sense is probably my favorite horror movie, if that counts. Oh, I, yeah, oh, yeah that, oh, that counts easily. That counts? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, that little girl in the tent's one of the scariest <laughs> things yes. in cinema. Yeah, of course. Um, and Nicholas, how about you? What's, what's your... Uh, all Time is The Shining. Um, and then what scared me was fucking Child's Play as a kid because of that fucking dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you see dead silence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was I was terrified of Chucky as well as a child. Yeah. Uh, I love watching those movies now though. I love all three of those. And I guess there's a shit ton more, but I don't really watch those. Right. Yeah, I think they're coming come with the whole series now too. Yeah, there's Chucky will be around forever, longer than than I will for sure. Um, what, yeah, what are y'all's favorite? Oh, um, I don't know, what, what, what's yours? Uh, the recent ones, I gotta go with The Witch. Yeah, you love The you Witch. I've sure seen The Witch, but that's probably my all time favorite. Uh, it, it's all it's all the classics of a blockbuster film. Uh, it takes place in New England in the 1600s. Uh, the dialogue is all period accurate. Oh, cool. And uh, and people are living on a farm, so it's all the all the all the hallmarks one of the one of the first parts of that movie was shot at this place Plymouth Plantation that I always went on uh school trips to so whenever I see that oh movie, really when they're like when they're like leaving the village yeah. I'm always like oh I've been there when I was a kid <laughs> that's awesome and then and then they were splitting wood and you were like traumatized again <laughs> <laughs> do they split wood in that movie I think they do. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they attempt. Yeah. yeah they I've attempt. actually heard from, I, I heard from someone else that, that, that that's the scariest or movie or their favorite horror movie too. Yeah. It's really good. Not necessarily on like the jump scares or anything like that, but the overall kind of atmosphere and yeah. kind of dread that permeates it is, is really good. Yeah. There's, okay, there's I can do that. Mitch's is skeleton key. I'm just going to answer for it. <laughs> Yeah, I represent for Louisiana. I've got to go with the Louisiana base. Skeleton key. Yeah. No, I think my fa- my favorite, truthfully, is the remake of The Ring. So the Gore Verbinski one. That was such a cool movie. Had never seen anything like it. Um, you know, kind of brought in the whole J Wave horror films and all that. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, that's probably my favorite. That's the one. I that's the one I always like go to when I'm like. Oh, here, you should watch this. Uh, that's the first one I, I, I had uh, Lisa watch when we first started dating. We watched it, and then it got done. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. And I left, and she was terrified and couldn't sleep. And she, like, didn't talk to me for, like, the next couple of days. I, I oh. don't know how we got married. Are, are you the guy in this movie? How did yeah, this happen? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. <laughs> I, it was a very relatable character. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh goodness, uh, Nate. Do you have any other questions you want to ask? No, I mean, I, yeah. In general, I just I just want to say the movie. I, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I like, you know, the terror and and horror and things like that are great. But when you can break it up and rotate it between laughing and being scared and laughing and being scared, that's usually that that's a sweet spot that's really hard to do. And, and mm-hmm. this movie, I think, does a pretty good job of it. So I just wanted to say. I did like the film. People should definitely go see it. Uh, and I look forward to the next. I'm looking forward to this Cape Cod. Is this a Cape Cod universe? We go in like Marvel, like every, like all the stories happen in Cape Cod. That um, where, the house is, the house seems empty. Well, it now seems like a good place to shoot. Well, you know now the, I mean? there's the dummy. You've got the ghost. You've got a, yeah, you've got options to work with. This, this yeah. is, I'm excited for this whole universe to expand. <laughs> I mean, Sam has to co- find a way to come back, though. Wait, I mean, mm. no, t- watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I didn't say anything. Um, As, if you want to do a spinoff in Ohio called It Coughs Deep, <laughs> we can. Uh, there's a lot of options for this. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Nate. I mean, you know, I think sometimes you kind of get a little worried when you see horror comedy and you wonder if it's like, just punchline after punchline kind of thing throughout to try to break the tension. This, I think did a very good job of, you know, the humor sort of built in with the characters. 
um, everything. I mean, there, there's a lot of weird stuff going on that adds to that, but it it never to me never took away from it either. It wasn't just like this kind of random thing that felt inserted into it, right? So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I recommend everyone listening to go check it out, rent it, watch it. It's uh, you know, we got Friday the Thirteenth. You gotta. You know, I know we're past October, but we're not in Christmas yet. So, and hey, this is like this is kind of a Christmassy horror film. It fits the season. Yeah. Yes. You know, squeezes in next to Die Hard and, uh, you know, Santa and Gremlins and Santa's Gremlins. sleigh with Bill Goldberg, you know, just if, sure. Wait, what? <laughs> Bill Goldberg is in a Christmas movie? In a Christmas horror film. He is a Santa that murders people. <laughs> Whoa! Perfect. That's perfect cast. Don't get Mitch started on, on wrestlers <laughs> in, in, horror, in horror movies because you just tripled the length of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite triple, maybe two and a half. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reel it, reel it in. No, um, guys, thank y'all both so much for coming and chatting with us for the movie. Uh, hopefully, a whole lot of success. We really love it. Congratulations. Uh, hopefully, a lot of people check it out and. Uh, and hit you up where where can people i guess interact with you reach out to you find out about or anything y'all have twitter um, well. yeah so you can reach me at uh nick Payne santos on twitter and instagram and i'm at charles gould one on instagram and at middle kid gould on twitter perfect all righty well thank y'all both so much uh nate tell them where they can find us you can find us as always at TX Pod Massacre on Twitter, Texas Podcast Massacre on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, check us out all your podcast platforms. Give us five star review on our podcasts, and we will put your movie in the rotation list. No one has picked Human Centipede for Mitch yet, so please get on that. But we had one person who just like sent it in on Twitter. No five star review for Human Centipede. <laughs> We're not just giving that one for free for like saying hey on Twitter. No five star review <laughs> it, and then it happens. God, if I have to watch that garbage, <laughs> you're going to earn it. <laughs> uh, once once again, thank y'all both for, for hanging out with us and chatting. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and from all of us here at Texas Podcast Massacre, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And just keep telling yourself, it's only a movie. Good night. Good night.